Hey everyone, welcome to Smart Contract Labs. So in today's lecture, uh, we are going to work on auction system and, and see how we can design it uh, in Solidity programming language using Remix IDE. So let's understand what is auction, auction system first and what are the different entities that, uh, that are there so that we can uh, do the auction, place, bid, and determine the highest bidder. So this is a flow diagram, or uh, this is a diagram of auction agreement. So in this auction agreement, uh, we are gonna work on smart contact that allow user to place bid on an item. And then uh, we determine at the end that who is the highest bidder and then transfer that amount to the owner. So in this, there are two entities, owner and bidder. So before going into the details of uh, the different function that we are going to uh, uh, develop or design in this smart contract, let's understand what is auction system. So auction system is a mechanism used for buying and selling goods or services uh, through a competitive bidding process. Right. So here we have a bidding process through which we can buy or sell our goods and services, any item that you want to sell. So it is a way to determine the value of an item based on what buyers are willing to pay for it. So instead of setting a, a fixed amount for an item, we can use this bidding system uh, so that we can determine that uh, what is the value of these items uh, on the basis of what buyers are willing to pay for it. Right. And uh, auctions are used in various contexts, including art auctions, real estate auctions, online marketplaces such as eBay, and sometimes for government procurement as well. Right. Because they provide a transparent and competitive way to determine the value of goods and services. Right. I hope you understand what auction system means. And uh, let's uh, uh, give you more detail about it, how uh, we are going to design the different function in the system. So basically, there are two entities. Uh, first one is your owner who creates uh, um, this auction system or uh, who place uh, who place the bids on an item right who places an item details and uh, for the buyers right second we have bidders we can have the multiple bidders who uh, uh, who who are responsible for uh, placing uh, uh, placing a bid for an item and uh, uh, out of them we can select who is the highest bidder and then uh, we can sell that item for that bidder uh, to that bidder right so owner, what are the responsibility and functions for the owner? So first owner creates a bid, uh, creates that auction for a particular item for that. Um, uh, the owner, you have two options. Either you can design um, a function uh, for initializing the auction with item name, starting price and bidding duration, right? So, and you can also use a constructor for it, right? So um, I'll, I'll work on the constructor and uh, moreover, you can also design a function for it, right? Next function is and auction. So there should be a start auction and and auction uh, uh, function so that we can determine that this uh, bid, uh, this bid is uh, it's uh, gonna uh, active for a particular amount of time, right? So this uh, and function is also uh, only called by the owner uh, after this bidding ends to uh, to transfer the highest bidding amount to the owner, who is the actual owner of that item, right? Now, next is bidders. So bidders uh, place bids. The users can place bid by using this place bid function, right? And in this function, we also update if you are placing a bid higher than the last bidder. So we have to update the highest bidding amount or transfer that amount uh, to the highest bidder. Next, uh, we have these two function it's just for the information sake. So anyone can access current uh, get current highest bid and get current highest bidder. So all this, both the information um, this function um, is accessible to everyone to check who is the uh, what is the current highest bid or highest bidder right next is get bidding um, bidding and amount because i uh, i said in the starting that this bidding uh, uh, will be active for a period of amount of time so you can also check uh, uh, that uh, how many minutes are left for this uh, 
for this bet or we can or I can place bet or not right so this is how uh, we are gonna design this auction agreements by having these uh, these function and uh, you can also uh, improve it by uh, uh, by getting into the more details by providing the more rigid uh, guidelines for this bidding system right it depends on on you so let's uh, open remix IDE, uh, uh, IDE and uh, start the coding part right so I have already opened this Remix ID in, in, in this tab, right? And then uh, we'll do one thing again. Uh, we'll go to the smart contract lab and here I'll create one file and name it as auction system. Auction system like this, right? Now this auction system is here. Now uh, the first two... Uh, uh, things that we always uh, specify before starting the solidity program that first one is your license identifier and second one the version of your compiler right so for that just uh, you can copy from uh, another file uh, both this information and uh, you can write it down like this xpdx license identifier and then uh, you can use, um, so what is the, ident this is the GPL 3.0 is the analysis identifier for this. You can just copy from other code that you have done before, right? And uh, the next one is the pragma and just copying here to this instead of writing it, right? Right, just paste like this so so we are using the current compile the compiler the latest compiler version is 8.24 uh, right now just create a contract for creating a contract we have this uh, contract keyword and the name of the contract now is auction system and just define its scope by using curly braces right now um just follow our structure so first we declare variables right then we specify the modifiers or the condition that uh, we want uh, to apply that we wanted to apply on different functions right um, and third uh, we initialize uh, um, the variables by using the constructor. So the uh, uh, so we always follow uh, this type of structure. First, declare the variables, then specify the modifiers that you want for the different functions, and then um, initialize different variable using constructor. Right. So let's do this. So uh, as you can see, how many entities we have here? One is owner and the bidder. Right. So because we have multiple bidders, so instead of storing the address, we are just storing the address of the owner, right? Right. Now, next we have, uh, we, uh, we will, uh, the owner will place a bid uh, for a particular item, for a particular item. So for that, I just uh, specify the name of the item as item, right? Now, now there should be a start price for that item uh, that should be initialized by the owner, right? So for this for the starting price, we have you you in public, and we have a start price for that item, right? Next, uh, because th there should be the bidding um, end time as well, so we'll just specify the bidding end time as like this. Just keep bidding and time. And then we do have uh, the highest bidder as well as uh, the highest bid. For that, you just need the address for it, who is the highest bidder. So because we have two, these two function, get highest bid and highest bidder. So we for these two function, we need this uh, information that who is the highest bidder currently and similarly we have a highest bid so highest bid should be in the form of un right so you stand for unsigned integer so here we have a highest bid what is the amount of the highest bid right so these two in provide the information by using these two function get highest bid and highest bidder here right next next task is to define the modifier so we can have the multiple modifiers uh, to impose different conditions so first modifier should be like this the owner only owner 
right so so this uh, uh, spe modifier specify the condition that only when we use this uh, modifier along with a function it means that only owner can access that function can can execute that function right for that we always need a required statement so required statement is message dot sender who is deploying this contract address should be equal to equal to owner like this if it is equal then it's fine if it is not equal then we have to display the error message like only the owner can call this function like this and we always end with a modifier with a underscore sign right because this um, what does it mean it means all the remaining statement of the function should be replaced by this right so this is the first uh, modifier now next to modify that there are certain function like we have a place bit function here place bit functions uh, it's gonna work only when uh, uh there is no um that bits uh, bid, bidding is in active uh, state right so bidding ending time is not there before bid ends right so for that we need a certain conditions to apply on that function to place a bid right so just uh, design one modifier for them so it's gonna be easy for them uh, for apply that condition so only before bidding ends keep it like this only before bid bidding end so before bidding ends, uh, we just use this function. And for that, we have a statement like this. So how you can check that uh, bidding is ends or not, or it is in active state or not. For that, we have this specifier called as bidding end time, right? So uh, like this, we have a, a global variable that is message.sender for storing the address who is executing the contract. Similarly, we have one global variable called as blog.timestamp. So what this global variable do, it uh, it captures the current um, uh, time of uh, the Ethereum block. It captures, you can think like that and you can uh, understand this as that it uh, stores the current uh, time of the Ethereum block, right? Right, so if the current time is less than, if the current time is less than the bidding and time, that means, uh, the bidding it is still in active state right because the current time if it is less than the bidding end time that means that bidding it's uh, already in the active state we can place the bid right if it is not that means bidding is ended bidding has ended like this i hope you got this point consider this block uh dot timestamp as a current timestamp the current uh, time value if it is greater if it is greater than the bidding end time that means the uh, the uh, bidding end time is already passed so bidding has ended right if it is less than then it's fine we can execute the rest of the function right it is done uh, and there is only uh, also uh, a function um, that we execute after the bidding end ends right the transfer of the amount right uh, uh for example this place which should be executed when uh, the bidding is in active state right and uh, and end of auction is uh, so get bidding end time this returns the um end times and uh, there's there is an end auction function that should be ex executed uh, when uh, only after the bidding ends. That means that the bidding is not in the active state, then only this should uh, this function should be executed by the owner. For that, we need to specify one modifier as well. So for that, uh, uh, we can uh, design one modifier like only um, after bidding end. So this will execute only after bidding end. And now you can use this as a reference. This is only before. So this should be, uh, we just need to change this comparison sign here, right? So require if the block dot timestamp is greater than or equal to bidding and time, right? Like this, then, then bidding, is already over, it's been over, right? If it is not, then bidding, just display the message as it has not ended yet, like this. 
I hope you are getting my point and just uh, close this modifier. So we are we have created three modifier. First, for checking only owner, there is a certain function that should be executed by only owner. So for that, we have specified that condition only owner modifier. Next, we have two modifiers. First one before when the bidding uh, process is in active state and when the bidding is over, right? So first, before only before bidding ends, that means we can place bid. The bidders can place bid now. So for that, we use this block dot timestamp global um, global variable that stored the current uh, time of the block, right? Of the current block. And if it is less than, that means this uh, current time is less than the bidding end time. That means bidding has not ended yet. And uh, otherwise bidding has ended. They display this message, right? And only after bidding end means uh, if the block time, that means current time is greater than equal to, greater than or equal to the bidding end time. That means uh, bidding has not ended that means bidding has ended otherwise the bid bidding has not ended right so this is how you can specify the different modifiers according to your requirement right and these are all options it's it depends upon your coding style and how you uh, you're gonna build the different function how you you're gonna apply different conditions or if you want to if you uh, don't want to it depends right now the first function should be uh, now we have done we have declared the uh, different variables we have uh, declared uh, to uh, so many modifiers that we need uh, at some point of time for the, some functions right Next, uh, it's to initialize the variable. For that, uh, we can use the parameterized constructor, right? So you can use this constructor. Now for constructor, uh, first uh, we need to initialize uh, the item, right? That should be of uh, string type, right? Next, uh, we need to initialize the start price. So you can see all the variables I have declared before start price like this. Next, uh, you need to initialize uh, bidding time, right? That means bidding and time, right? Um, right? So these are the uh, different uh, variables. So you need to, uh, this should be initialized with message or sender. Then we have parameter for item, for start price, for bidding. And these uh, two, it's uh, gonna uh, be, uh, it's gonna be changed within the function definition itself, right? Now let's, let's define its scope and initialize the different variable. First one is your item. First one is your owner. So owner should be message dot sender the address of the of the of the deployer right next we have item so you initialize it with parameter item right next we have a start price right and initialize with it start price like this next we have bidding and time right so bidding and time should be initialized like this because here uh, we pass the bidding and time in minutes you can say in minutes right so uh, 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 for initializing the bidding and time we always uh, always initialize it with respect to the current block time right so you uh, you, you store the current block time in block dot timestamp variable right and uh, you are gonna um Add this current timestamp with a uh, bidding, with a bidding uh, and time in minutes, right? And you just uh, convert it in the form of minutes. So the conversion unit is minutes here into one minutes this is how you, you are converting it into minutes so you are adding see, uh, you are adding the bidding and time in duration uh that's your provide in minutes that how many minutes your uh your um 
uh, your be bidding uh, will be in active state, right? And uh, you're just converting it with respect to the block, uh, the current timestamp, right? By multiplying it with this uh, unit time of conversion. This is the unit of conversion because we, we, we are going to provide this uh, bidding and time in minutes, right? This is how it, it's work, right? Now, next is uh, you need to initialize the highest bidder. So initially, the highest bidder uh, should be the address. So for initializing it with the address as 00, so this, this is going to be initial address. So all address value should be zero. This is our initial value. Like, like you initialize your integer value as zero. So like that, that also, we can also initialize the address variable as address zero, right? Next is highest bid, uh, initialize the highest bid as zero. So highest in the starting the highest bit is, uh, is zero now, right? So this is how we have used the constructor for initializing the different declare variables, right? Like this. So we have owner item. We have declared all the or initialize all the declare variables in our constructor, right? It's done now. Now it's time to uh, define our function. So first function is your um place bit function because this is how you just start this place this is done the constructor is done now we are going to work on these functions and then we end this auction right so first function is place bits and this function allows the user to place bit right and also update the highest bidder right so just uh, define this uh, place bit function function place bit like this right so this is the function and this should be public should be used by and this should be public payable so i told you this payable keyword we always use this payable keyword uh, with a function whenever we want to transfer some value some amount from one address to the another address because here uh, this is a auction system so you have to when you are placing a bid so uh, you are transferring some uh, fund uh, to the highest bidder right you are refunding uh, refund the previous highest bidder right and transfer it to the new highest bidder route right this is how uh, you are gonna um, uh, write the definition or uh, uh, the functionality of this function right next uh, because this a place bid function it should only be executed by the bidder when your bidding is in active state right so bidding should be in active state for that we have used this modifier only before bidding ends so you only execute this uh, function only before this bidding ends or before the ending time of this bidding, right? Now, um, when you are placing, uh, um, uh, when when a bidder uh, place, places um, a bid, right? So that value should be greater than the highest bid. Because if you are, um, for example, the, the current bid for a particular item is 10, so you can only place a bit, a bit when your uh, value is greater than 10, right? Then only it will work. Otherwise, the 10 is the highest bid, so you cannot place a bid for the value less than 10, right? This is how this auction system works, right? So for that, we require one statement here to check your value that you are going to place or you're going to bid for this function it should be greater than the highest bid the current highest bid right if it is not uh, highest and you are placing a value is less than for example the current highest bid for an item is 10 right so for that um, for that uh, your bid will not work will not work and it give a message that bet must be higher than must be higher than the current highest current highest bet like this right so there is no point to bid for for an item uh with a value less than the highest bet right next uh it is done now next um uh, if uh, uh, now this is the time if you are placing a value is highest than um, the current highest bid so that that means uh, there is a need to transfer uh, the amount and uh, uh, refund uh, or refund the previous highest bidder to the next highest higher one right uh, so let's understand this uh, core part that if highest bidder if highest bidder is not equal to the address zero like we initialize it in the starting right 
if it is not equal to if this condition is true it is not equal to address zero that means we are not in the initial state so you have to refund the previous highest bidder how by using this payable thing right so you have to transfer this amount as highest bidder dot transfer highest bid right you have to refund uh, the previous highest bidder so whosoever is the highest bidder previously to transfer uh, uh, that uh, value right so this is how it work and just uh, uh, update the highest bidder as uh, the new bidder that is your message dot sender who exe uh, who has executed this function right message dot sender and Right, and next just highest bit as message dot value like this. Right, and by using this statement, uh, we are just uh, refund the previous highest data. So this should be this comment is for this statement, right? You're transferring the highest bidder, the highest bid amount, right? Now, after this transfer, we are just updating the highest bidder and bid value, right? Because uh, that uh, bidder uh, got out from this auction system because we got our new highest bidder now whose message dot value is greater than the current highest bid value, right? It is done. Now, next is, um, now we have updated this value. Now, the other function is just to get the information of the different things. So, first function is to get current highest bid function, right? And this function only returns certain variable values. So that should be of view ties. So whenever we are not changing any state variable, right, we are just uh, accessing gates for that, that function should be of view type, right? Returns and state variables are your these variables that you are uh, declare inside the contract, but outside the functions, right? And return, uh, return of because highest bit uh, we are returning so it should be of u inter type right so here uh, we are just returning uh, return so return highest bit yeah it should be like returns right sorry returns like this here it returns and here it returns. now next function is same as this get current highest bidder like this and there should be a, uh, as well public viewer so here we are returning the address of the highest bidder so that's why the the return type should be of address and return highest yes. it's done so these two functions are done so this 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 function is done these two function and get bidding end time this is also giving the information so function get bidding end time right so there's also a view function public view returns right here we are returning the time so it should be of in type right and this is the definition now return bidding and time yes. right it's done i guess all these uh, functions um, are for giving you different now we have one more function left that is the end auction. So this function should be called by the only owner after the bidding ends to transfer the highest bid amount to the owner, right? Let's do this. So uh, this function is called as end auction. 
right? Now this function should be public. It's of public type. Should only be called by only owner, right? And should only be executed after bidding ends. Only after bidding ends, right? Now <clears throat> here, there is one uh, statement that we need or the requires. There is one condition that we need uh, in this function that checks if there are bidders or not for this auction system. Because if your uh, the bidder address is at zero that we initialize at the starting, that means there is no bidder for this auction system for the current time, right? So for that, we are just checking the initial condition if highest bidder, if highest bidder, is not equal to address zero, right? Then there are arbiters for the system. Otherwise, no bits placed for this auction, right? Done, right? Next, if it is, this is not the condition, we have bidders for this system. So we just transfer all amount. So for that, we need to use payable. So payable owner, right payable owner and we just transfer the highest uh, bid to the owner it's done and this function should be payable as well right because we are transferring the amount now it is done i guess all functions we have done all the functions so the we have initialized this we have done this we have done all this function as well now uh, it's, it's uh, the code uh, code looks good good to me there is no error let's do this first we compile this just compile this so parsing error we got this okay address zero i missed one up. open bracket here and this should be like this right and like this i guess this is done now we compile it yeah, it is done now Right, next, deploy it, right? So just, uh, I'm just crossing this again and I'm deploying it this with the first. So here I'm, um, so for deploying it, you have to in, uh, uh, execute this constructor. So we have a uh, item. So item, start price and bidding and time, right? So item I'm here taking as, um, mm, I want to place a bid for a laptop, right? I have a laptop. And uh, um, start price is 100 bucks and uh, bidding end time is one minute, right? Just deploy it. Now it is deployed. Now you can check the different things. Who is the highest bidder? Highest bid is zero currently because we have initialized it with the zero value. Highest bidder having address zero because this is how we have initialized it, right? And current, so everything is zero now, right? Get bidding amount is so this is the bidding ending time. This is the decimal representation of a unit value, integer value of one minute, right? Now, and you can check the item is our laptop owner address is this, and the start price is 100, right? Now I'm going to place a bid. I'm a bidder now, right? I am specify certain value as 10. So I'm, because the starting value is 100, should be greater than 100. So I place a bit of 200. Right, so uh, just use this place bid function and it's showing some error here. Bidding has not ended here. The transaction has been reverted. Bidding has not ended yet, which is displaying this only after bidding end. It should be for the place, uh, For the place a bit, it's not after, it should be before. We have to uh, place a bit before bidding app. So I have used this wrong modifier here. So let me redeploy it, just cross this, delete this and redeploy it, right? Um, and I'm deploying with the same value, just deploy it. It is, it's correct now, right? Now uh, uh, just check all the values, right? Now uh, use the different uh, address, right? And place a bit greater than the current value that is 100 and just place a bit. It is 
has been reverted the transaction reason bidding has not ended yet only before bidding and now i have just message dot value should be this and i'm just updating few values here only after bidding has not ended yet i guess uh, we have passed this one minute sign right let's keep it two minutes and redeploy it let's see if it is working now right uh, uh just delete all those instances and do it again so i'm taking first one as your uh, right so the items item is your laptop and initial price should be 100 and the time is of two to two minutes right now it is done now uh, uh so this is the uh different information i'm getting from different functions now just uh click on the next part and place a bet uh, for placing a bet the item should be greater than 200 so again the transaction has been reverting um, to the initial state bidding has not ended yet i have saved this file i guess um, i just need to recompile it i guess um, because i did not recompile it after i have made certain changes so let me recompile it so recompile it because i've changed here only before bidding ends and uh, for the other function only after bidding ends right so this is the mistake i have done so i recompile it it is done now redeploy it with first address and just place item as uh, laptop right and uh, the price should be 10 i guess just take for the sake of simplicity and just take a two minute time and deploy it it is deployed right and uh, just check the different options right now just place a bit uh, from this amount and the item should uh, message dot value should be greater than let's it's now working Right, so I have not compiled that after I made certain changes. That's why it was showing some errors. Now it is working, right? Now I have placed a bid and then you just highest bid should be 20 now and the address of the highest bidder is this AB8, right? Now just ch change the uh, bidder address and place a bid amount as 40 now and just place a bid, it is done. Now again, check uh, who, what is the highest bid is 40, who is the highest bidder, the current address now, right? Now uh, you can check the item as owner address is this, start price is 10, right? Now uh, you can just use different account and you place your bid as 60, right? Again, place it, now it is done. You can check uh, the highest bidder is now this, the current address, and the highest bid is 60 now, right? Now next uh, bidding end time is this. We have two minutes time, start price is this, like this, right? All functions are working well. Now just switch to the owner and uh, just use this and and function. So it is not, a bidding has not ended. That means I have, sub, I have given the two minute time. It is not still over. So we can place more bids. So this is how you, this auction system works. Right. So that's all uh, from my side for this uh, smart contract. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. And if you have any problem issues and uh, any um, anything you would like to share with me, you can use this comment box. And thank you so much for your time. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.